What's good YouTube? Lou784 checking in here to finally, and I mean finally, bring you a new video of my 2015 Subaru WRX. Uh, today is Sunday. I got the day off. I'm going to make a, another driving around video. As you can see, I got my ghetto rig uh, camera set up here, which is going to film the speedometer and uh, RPMs and uh, gear position. And I got this camera here. Uh, gonna film the outside obviously and you know kind of like the gauges here so hopefully this all works out well and uh, I'm glad to finally be back and bring you guys a new video so hope you enjoy it so here we go car has been uh, fully warmed up go ahead and do my usual turning off of the traction and stability control because uh, no real WRX driver needs to need that in this uh, type of weather uh, it is summer now. We have been getting a lot of rain lately. And it looks like we have some more on the way. But uh, I think for right now we'll be okay. External temperature outside, 71 degrees. I do have the AC kind of pumped a little cool. But uh, I don't think that'll affect much because I do believe that, that wide open throttle uh, this car does actually turn off the uh, the uh, AC uh, compressor so I don't think it'll be much of an issue I'm gonna do my usual uh, drive on to the back roads where uh, the implement is a little higher as well as having a lot less traffic so that always uh, is beneficial Like I said earlier, mileage uh, 11,293. Car's been still running and doing really good. Uh, very happy with it. No real issues. Starts every time I turn the key. Um, yield economy between 28 and 30 miles per gallon highway. Uh, with a combined city, I'm going to say I'm around 23, or sorry, not 23, 24, 25. Uh, just pretty much very happy with it. Doing very good. <clears throat> but yeah, she'll uh, she'll get up and go. She definitely moves. It is definitely a car that could get you into trouble if you're not careful. But uh, for me, I kind of go to a certain speed and then kind of get on the brakes because you never really know where wherever that cop might be hiding and looking to get you. So just got to be careful. Uh, something I wanted to mention that I thought was kind of funny was uh, at 10,000 miles, I did change the air filter in my car. Uh, instead of going with a stock air filter, I decided to go with a Perrin uh, high flow, just a stock actual, you know, stock, uh, basically a stock panel uh, air filter, not like an extra cold air intake. But I did upgrade that, and I did look at the old air filter, and the funny thing was, is uh, my old air filter had about, I want to say, eight or nine uh, bees, and like big bees, like bumblebees and actual yellow jackets, which I thought was kind of funny because uh, the fact that this car is a WRX and it kind of does have that uh, rumble, I found it funny that there's bees in my uh, air filter, which is something I've never seen in my previous cars. But uh, I thought it was worth mentioning because uh, 
It was something I was not used to seeing, and it was quite fun. Uh, after switching to the Perrin air, air filter, uh, I noticed, uh, obviously there's no power difference, but I did notice uh, the uh, air intake induction noises were a lot louder. Uh, I noticed when I get off the throttle, uh, there's kind of that whoosh sound that I uh, didn't actually get before. Sorry, I was talking slow because I'm concentrating on driving. I didn't get that whoosh sound after I lost the throttle uh, before, and I think because the stock air, uh, air uh, filter from the factory uh, was a little bit more restrictive. So I did this with the pair of air filter. Uh, it does seem like it, it seems a little bit more higher flow. So uh, for those reasons, I do like it. I'm happy with it. Uh, obviously, I see no difference in power, which is understandable because you know it doesn't really matter what when it comes to a stock panel air filter. You're really not going to notice any increases. And also, as well as the cold air intake, I think for you to actually notice an increase, you would have to get a tune uh, to uh, actually find, find that those. Uh, Noticeable differences. Uh, still running your stock, uh, no tune. I did think about it, and for now, uh, still just got got to run the stock, uh, stock uh, boot or stock the uh, uh, ECU. So I did not uh, make any changes, and maybe in the future I might consider it. Uh, one thing I did want to do is take my car to the Route 66 drag strip. Uh, there's one in town in Juliet, and I did kind of want to get a quick rundown of what this car will do stock. Uh, you know, my uh, 60 foot times, uh, quarter mile, and uh, you know, see what she'll do. Uh, in terms of uh, making my runs better, the only things I can think of that can make my car a little bit, maybe a little bit quicker in terms of a little bit reduced weight would be to uh, one thing, run the fuel tank, not extraordinary low, dog, not extraordinary low. I mean, obviously I know you don't, you're not supposed to run your fuel tank really low. It's uh, not good for the fuel pump because it will, uh, it can cause it to overheat and also there's a lot of contaminants that could be in your field tank that your uh, <clears throat> car will uh, uh, burn up and it's not really good for the engine. So, uh, And then another thing I thought about was this isn't really like a huge deal but to remove the spare tire and jack I'm going to assume that's going to save probably an extra 35 38 pounds roughly I mean for me every little difference counts you figure you know you got an extra 335 pounds out of the trunk and fuel tank uh, you know it's got what almost a 16 gallon fuel tank you figure if I run it with three or four gallons and that already is a pretty good amount of uh, weight savings that will uh won't make a huge difference but it, every little difference counts so you know uh I think it will uh, help so as I uh, left between the gears. I don't know if you can hear it with the camera, but uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> 